Hey Outlaws, welcome back. Today I have another theory video for you. And this one is about Rickert. And the really super important significance that Rickert is going to have to the story later on. These are some things that I only just figured out when I went back and reread the manga. So I want to take some time to talk about it and see what you all think. So when Guts first joined the Band of the Hawk, he saved Rickert's life. So right off the bat, Guts' presence in the story is the reason that Rickard is alive and is able to even participate in the events that unfold later on. Honestly, when I first watched the anime and even when I first read the manga, I never really gave that much consideration to Rickard um, because he was just like this kid that was hanging out with the band of the hawk and that always seemed a little weird to me. I know that Guts was also a kid and he was hanging around with Gambino's mercenary band, but I don't know, Rickard just never really resonated me, resonated with me as a character. We also never got any backstory on where he came from, so I just wasn't really that invested in him. Yeah, and even though he was one of only three surviving members of the Band of the Hawk, um, and he was also one of Griffith's biggest fans, so he would have actually been a really good sacrifice. I kind of just chalked it up to Kentaro Miyoro wanting to leave someone alive who didn't actually experience the eclipse, so that there could be this kind of built-up tension when they talked about it, since Guts obviously was not able to talk to Casca about it. But recently, I've been rereading the manga, and a huge thing jumped out at me, which I never noticed before, and it really convinced me that Rickert, this whole time, has been protected and kept alive because he's going to play a really big role in Guts redeeming Griffith in the end. So when Guts returns to the Band of the Hawk after being gone for a year, during the time when Griffith was imprisoned, tortured, and basically broken down to the point where he would even be able to take on the mantle of Femto, um, when they decided they're going to go and rescue him, they split the remaining members of the Band of the Hawk. The Band of the Hawk had suffered a bunch of casualties, um, you know, as they've been fighting during this last year without Griffith's leadership, without Guts there. And a large portion of the group just really wasn't in a good fighting condition. So they would have been a hindrance since it could very well be assumed that the Midland army was going to come after them as soon as they discovered that Griffith has been liberated. So Rickert wanted to go along with Guts and Casca, but they didn't want to take him. He kind of was a little bit pissy about that. Um, but instead, they sent him to go along with the wounded, and later on, they were all going to meet up at a designated point once they had Griffith and everybody was safe. So this leads us to the second instance where Rickard is protected and basically had his life spared so that he would be able to be useful for events later on in the story. Had he gone with Gut's group, he would have just ended up inside the eclipse with the rest of them. Um... But instead, his journey took him on a way different path, which, again, really convinces me that he's going to play a much bigger role than I originally anticipated um, just watching the anime and kind of briefly reading through the manga. And honestly, kind of skimming over the eclipse parts because I thought I knew it pretty well from watching the anime so many times. So once they split ways and settled their camp, um, Rickert was helping to assist all the wounded when they ran out of water. So they sent him to go fetch more. So while he was away getting water, Rickert sees a fairy fly by. But no, not a fairy. It was Rosine. Definitely a demon. Um, but that's also kind of cool because that's something that I also didn't catch the first time reading it. Because in the manga at this point, we've not had the Lost Children arc. So we don't know who Rosine is. We don't know what she does. Um, yeah, at that point reading the manga, you would think, oh my gosh, it's a fairy. Crazy. Um, sadly though, when Rickard ends up returning to the camp... All of his comrades have been killed by Rosine and the other monsters. And this brings us to instances three and four, 
where Rickert also was protected and his life was spared. So had Rickert not been sent for water at that moment, he would have also been killed by the monsters. And really, more likely what would have happened is that Rosine probably would have taken him to come join her ranks since he is a child. Um, And we can see that Rosine was clearly planning this right before Skull Knight appears and kind of like scares her away. Um, So Skull Knight was actually very instrumental in protecting Rickert for that fourth time. So... What exactly does Rickert do, which is so beneficial for the story to continue? Well, I'll get to that in just about 30 seconds. But first, I want to just remind you guys to please, please, please support our channel um, in any way that you can. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave us a comment. Or we just recently got a Patreon up. The link is in the description, so you guys can go and check that out too. We're working really hard to bring you content most days out of the week. Dave is still training for his Guinness World Record with his 48-pound Dragon Slayer. We have lots of videos documenting that. And something else that you guys probably don't know is that we actually already have several completed stories. Um, And we're working on turning them into graphic novel formats. And we're planning to kind of release those first and give sneak peeks to some of our Patreons. So check us out there if you want to get the in on those projects. Okay, back to record. So anyways, after seeing his friends get murdered by all of the supernatural beings... Rickard ends up being picked up by a covered wagon in which is traveling a fortune teller and looks to me to be Puck. So Puck's fairy dust at this point has already probably healed Guts before. I don't know if you guys remember, but after the hundred man fight, Judo gives Casca some fairy dust to use on Guts' wounds. And he mentions that he had acquired it from a fairy when he was traveling with the circus. We also know that Puck at some point was traveling with a circus, so it's very, very likely that it was Puck's fairy dust, even at that time, that was responsible for healing guts. I digress slightly, though. So, we don't see what happens inside of the wagon between Rickard and the other people inside. Um, All we see is that when they drop him off close to the rendezvous, rendezvous point, he's given a bag of fairy dust. Then as Rickert walks off, we see a conversation between the fortune teller and, again, looks to me to be Puck, um, happening inside of the wagon. And they're having a conversation that's talking about Rickert and his fate. So there's a lot to unpack in these couple of panels, but I think that a lot of it, again, is pointing to very, very, very significant events that's going to happen later on. Puck mentions that as soon as Rickert saw him, he acted like he's seen a ghost. And he mentions that that's true of some people, especially people that live in the cities. And I think that this is kind of pointing to the events that happen later on with Rosine. Um, people that live in that particular city, when they see, when they saw Puck, they started freaking out because they associated him being a fairy with her demonic feet fairies and i feel like this is kind of what they were um referring to he also says he must be the son of a good family so i think that's a really interesting thing to bring up and it did get me thinking we don't know anything about the family that rickard came from we don't know anything about his lineage his backstory he was clearly just a really young child when he joined with the band of hawk but we don't know anything around those circumstances he might be from some really well off family Or he might be from another lineage, which I'm going to touch on a little bit later on because I think that it's something that's going to come up way further in the story and part of his significance. So the fortune teller says that she wants to look into her crystal ball and, you know, see if she can find out anything about this child's fate. And immediately she starts to get really, really concerned. And she mentions that wherever he goes, many stars are gathering. Which is interesting that Rickert, you know, unsupposing Rickert, just wherever he goes, many stars are gathering. That definitely seems to me like a very significant character. 
She goes on to talk about the innumerable state strength of an evil star within the heart of the great white star as if it were swirling about. Talks about keto, rago, I won't get into that. Those are kind of these bad cosmic entities. Um, yeah, that that's a long story. You can look it up. Um, they are actual kind of like demonic entities that are signified by bad stars and the position of them within somebody's chart can indicate um, like bad fortune in their life. Um, but she goes on to say it's, it is certainly that great white star. It is certainly that great white star. Saku, the new moon, is trying to eclipse it. So this is obviously a lot of like you know, woo-woo, woo-woo talk. And Puck kind of points it out, saying, you know, I don't understand. Can you say it a little differently? She goes on to say she's never seen such an arrangement of stars. It's an evil omen, something that's going to affect the country or even the world. Clearly, she is having a premonition about the upcoming eclipse. Um, because, you know, what else is an eclipse? But you have one star eclipsing another star, it's going to bring about a lot of great evil that will affect the whole world. Um, and that this is something that Rickert is going to be involved in. Um, she says that it's not good because this child is playing an important role in this arrangement of stars. And that's his fate. And the fact that he's there proves it. She goes on to talk too about the interference in a person's fate goes against principle against her principles and that a mere human cannot change fate they are who they are because they have to be and that's even truer if the person is someone who can change the world so it does again bring up the point of all of this comes out as she's looking at let's look into rickard's fate rickard is clearly going to be somebody who will have a really big effect on the world on the events that are happening, on these events that are happening with the eclipse. Another interesting thing she says is that a mere human cannot change fate. I also believe that at this point in the story, not this point, but at the point we're at in chapter 368, I don't really believe that Guts is considered to be a human anymore. The things that Guts does far exceed being a human. He has powers that position him somewhere in between the astral realms and the human realm. He's clearly not human anymore. So he is somebody who can change fate. And Rickert, as we've seen, is going to be very instrumental in helping Guts to change fate. So as Rickert wanders off in a state of shock, uh, towards his meeting point with Guts, Casca, Griffith, and the remaining band of the Hawk, he sees the swirling maelstrom that is the Eclipse and the battle going on between Skull Knight and Zod. Skull Knight, who previously had an essence, helped to save Rickert at another time. So once Skull Knight emerges with Guts and Casca, he's very pleasantly surprised to see Rickert uh, to see that Rickert's there, and not only that, but that Rickert has a bag of fairy dust that is able to heal Guts and Casca's wounds. So if Rickert had died at any of these earlier points in the story, he would not have been able to be there at that exact moment with that fairy dust and be able to save Guts and Casca. This is clearly a very strong thread that's woven between Rickert and Guts and Casca's survival. As the fortune teller had said, this child is playing an important role in the arrangement of the stars and no mere human can interfere with fate, especially if that person will play a role in changing the world. So there's many things we don't know about Rickert regarding where he came from and his lineage. He was clearly orphaned as a young child, um, but fate has always protected him, leading him to this point where he has now taken over Goto's workshop. 
Goto, who most likely is a dwarf and has magical powers, which is why he was able to even craft Guts Dragon Slayer in the first place. Um, and Rickert has learned at least the very basic swordsmithing skills, as evidenced by the memorial that he created for the fallen band of Hawk. It could also be possible that maybe Rickert is also part of this same family line of dwarfs, and he also has some of these magical weapon and armor creating abilities. Um, we do know that Rickert was essentially the mastermind behind equipping Guts with his cannon for his hand, which has been instrumental in saving his life numerous times. Rickert already rejected joining Griffith as the Hawk of Light in his new band of the Hawk. So he is definitely 100% on Gut's side and I believe is going to be instrumental in Gut's redeeming Griffith. And yes, I feel like Gut's is going to help Griffith to find redemption and that that would be a very plausible ending for the story because it's something that's actually hinted at at several other places earlier on in the manga. But that's a different topic for a different theory video. So if you want to see it, leave me a comment letting me know. Let me know your thoughts on the other topic we've discussed today about Rickert or anything else. Um, and be sure to subscribe so that you'll see those future videos. Anyways, Outlaws, it's been a pleasure talking to you all. This is all I have for today. I'll see you next time. Mwah. Bye.